Something a bit different on the channel today. Um, I'm going to build this one in full, uh, in one single uh, video. And a um, bit of a nice kit to start back with. I uh, had a bit of a break over the summer now, so just getting back into things as far as the channel's concerned. So um, not going to do an inbox review on this because it's been... Um, uh, it's been around a while, this is just a new sort of boxing of it for this uh, this current year um, and we do get a nice marking scheme here which is, um, so I'm not going to pronounce where it is but it was the aircraft flown by Ernst uh, Udet in uh, one of the German formations there that I can't pronounce uh, in France March 1916 so it's a nice early aircraft of the First World War uh, it is the Fokker Rheindecker Mark III um, I've built the original kit that Airfix uh, released and um, Quite looking forward to see how this one goes. Now, the only problem that was in the previous one was with the application of the decals, and um, these decals that go around the fuselage here weren't actually uh, measured correctly, so they didn't really fit that well. So there was a lot of messing about to try and get them to fit. So these actually look different already. They look tapered, which is what they need to be. Uh, the the original ones were sort of um, they didn't have that taper. They were like a straight. What am I trying to say here? Like a rectangle with uh, diagonal edges, <laughs> for want of a better word. So hopefully that will go on uh, no problem. And um, it's a simple uh, paint scheme, so I'm going to be using Tamiya colours here. I'm also going to put the uh, pilot in as well. Uh, because this is this actually has a particularly good pilot. This is where they were using. Um, I've got the sprue here. They started using the. Um, they actually used 3D technology for this pilot, um, and it's one of the best they've done. Um, they've gone away from this for some reason since they did this kit, but uh, nevertheless, that's a very good pilot. And there's some nice features here as well with the machine gun barrel and all the rest of it. So uh, it's a nice kit. So uh, let's get into it. Right, so kicking off with um, step one through to three there. Uh, well, actually, all the way through to five. That's the first page, so I've uh, got all the parts. So I've got all the parts ready for that. Now, if we just have a look at these. Um, so we're pretty much building up the um, cockpit here. So we've got the cockpit floor, and you're not going to see anything past this um, recess part here. So you're going to have, um, I'm not sure what it is, it's like a back plate there, which is going in. And then the cockpit's just the front there, and then you've got the two bits of side wall here for the fuselage. Now everything inside here, like the base colour, is actually the same as the exterior colour. So we're going to spray that with um, matte uh, slate grey, as this is like a greeny grey. So I'm using XF73 for that. Um, then the seat is a leather colour. I haven't really landed on what colour I'm going to use for that. Maybe um, I might end up mixing a bit of orange with red brown, something like that, to try and give a leather colour. Um, just put a bit of an orangey tone into it. Now I'm going to spray this. Um, we've got... Uh, I'm going to attach the plate here for the seat. This is like the base of the seat here. Um, so that goes on. So I'm going to get that in. I'm going to spray the seat separately. The uh, control lever there is black. Uh, we're going to spray the two insides of the fuselage here as well, the side walls. Obviously the bottom of the cockpit, the cockpit there. And um, then next up it's uh, bringing it all together. I'm not going to add any harnesses because I'm going to use the pilot as I've uh, mentioned before. And then we're running through the next steps which looking at this are... It's a rather simple kit, being series one, so you can you can pretty much fly through these. So we bring the fuselage together there. Um, a bit of a unusual way of doing it, I suppose, um, but it, it fits for this aircraft in the fact that uh, you've got a, a separate bottom. So you've got you've got the two parts here that make up the roof and the top of the fuselage, and then they sort of slot onto the bottom here as well. Now, if memory serves me right, it is quite a nice join, um, and there's no problem that I remember, and I can't see there's going to be any problem there. It's almost snap fit. goes in very nicely into some recessed parts on the bottom of the fuselage there. So that should be no problem. And then we're running down and making, starting to make up parts of the cowling. So I've already cut these parts off, so I'll clean those up. Um, it is worth mentioning there's quite a bit of cleanup 
required in this. Uh, it's a new kit. I can't remember there being quite as much of this before, but um, uh, I built it a while ago, so I don't. I would imagine the moulds wouldn't be starting to show flash and, and wearing just yet. It hasn't had that much of a run, I don't imagine. Um, so there's uh, all we're talking about is just a bit of flash around some of the the parts here. So for the engine, for instance, um, I am scraping all of the uh, flash that's around there. Uh, but again, it's it's quickly done. Uh, the engine is movable. I will leave it movable because it's a rotary engine, so it spins with the propeller. The whole thing spins. Um, so I'm intending to leave that movable if it's simple. But um, I might actually change that if it becomes a bit difficult. And then we've got um, some parts of the cowling there, or shrouds to the front of the fuselage. Then the actual cowling over the engine going on and then it's finishing touches before we run onto the undercarriage and then it starts to get a little bit more um, complicated as far as what we're going to paint, how we're going to paint it and um, attaching the wings and stuff. I think I might wing leave the wings off so I can paint the silver around here nice and cleanly and then just try and attach them and um, hopefully if I can do a bit of a clean glue join here then um, there shouldn't be any problems. So that's what we're looking at at the minute and we'll check back in once everything's had a bit of paint. So we've moved on um, quite considerably here, uh, not a great deal has been done but it looks like it has because um, it's a series 1 kit you can uh, really push through the stages quite quickly. Um, so you might see here that I've uh, gone against my original plan with the interior colours and um, I did spray it up as Airfix say in the instructions but um, I suddenly thought I'd, I'd just check a couple of things and I got a set of the wingnut wings um, instructions and I'd highly recommend you to get those if you're doing any of these kits so even the Edward one or anything like that because it's got a lot of good useful resources and um, the colours were completely different so um, I've elected to go with those because I would imagine they are more accu accurate so um, what we've got here is uh, just an aluminium colour at the front, that's uh, MRP white aluminium and then so we've got desert yellow back here uh, which I've used for a sort of beige colour um, for the interior and then I've just painted in the cockpit green with the um, the cockpit struts here, the bars that make up the um, the cockpit tub as it were um, I've also painted this aluminium this is where the instrument panel is and just picked out a couple of the dials not much you're going to see obviously the same that side and then the cockpit floor is um wooden deck tan for the floor then i've painted the um uh i suppose that's coming off of the control stick i don't know what that's called but there's the the bar that runs along the floor i've picked that out in black um and uh, picked out a few other little details and then the rear um the rear part here is uh, dark wood, it's meant to be like a mahogany sort of wood and then the front part is aluminium and um, that all comes together quite nicely to give you the effect that I should be able to show you here and that will all come together to um, give you this effect so if I just show you one side uh, that's how it's going to look and the aluminium meets up at the front there and of course the front section of this from there onwards is uh, bare metal so uh, that's been no problem so I've just given that a uh, gloss coat now and um, I'm probably just going to use very lightly um, some of the Flory models dark dirt wash and take most of it off to be honest just to give a bit of definition and then we can get the fuselage together along with the top and the front end piece as well so that will bring it all to, um, uh, to to merge it in so that's those bits I've also got the rest a few other parts here so I've got the engine out and um, the propeller blade there and uh, that's ready for painting so I'm going to paint that separately I've also cleaned the wings up and these are absolutely lovely really nice uh, really nice details here with the ribbing effect and I'm actually going to try and um, highlight some of this ribbing so I think uh, I'm going to check it out before I get to it but I think you make um, the parts where the ribbing's actually touching I'm not sure whether that's lighter or darker it's one of those uh, to give the contrast because that's where the actual wood in the wing would be touching the um, fabric so it would show a different colour as opposed to the fabric in between which isn't uh, being forced and stretched quite as much so that's those pieces um, and then I've also done a little bit of work here 
Now I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, this might be a little bit difficult, but um, here, this is the sort of strut that sticks up at the, at the front of the aircraft where all of the rigging goes and um, it's very nicely done as, uh, as it comes off the kit but I, I just wanted to do a little bit extra here and um, what, what it is is uh, you have two turnbuckles coming off of here, this is on the real aircraft, so these here are turnbuckles then in the middle there's a little uh, wheel and the turnbuckles take uh, two lots of the rigging off of the wing and then the wheel in the middle takes another couple parts of the rigging um, and I'd just like to have good fixing points so what I've done is just added a bit of Albion alloys just to um, firstly to give a sort of protrusion of the wheel there so hopefully you can see talking about uh, this part here just added um, a little bit of brass tubing and then I've cut off the plastic ends and added a bit of um, brass tubing on the ends there as well so that they're hollowed out. Now whether I'll be able to get the rigging through there or not, uh, that's sort of by the by really. It's just a place where I can actually fix it. Uh, but I imagine I'm going to use a super fine so it might fit through there. Um, so I've also done that and that's ready to go as soon as we get the fuselage together. So next up I'm going to apply the wash now and then mat it down and bring the fuselage together. Once it's matted down I'll put it back on camera and then um, glue it together with a bit of a speed up, speeded up part of the video. And um, hopefully then we're on to attaching the front parts of the cowling and getting the engine on and then we'll be uh, some way through the build by then. Okay, so we've jumped on a little bit here with the Iron Decker. It looks like I've done more than I have. Um, you just saw me putting the fuselage together and um, 
I've painted it here basically just to check the seams. So um, I've taken a neutral green colour, well, uh, an olive green colour. That's just going to play the part of um, giving a bit of depth and definition for when the next colour goes on. So I'm going to use pretty much um, like ROMO2 German Grey from um, the Luftwaffe aircraft, Second World War aircraft. It's pretty much the same. Uh, may do a slight... Um, uh, may change it slightly. So um, looking over this, it's gone together okay. So I've checked the seams there. Um, there's a few little bits showing, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. The main seam down the back there is all okay. Um, I've got the cowling on and the engine done. So now I've done this green here, um, I'm going to mask off the green part and then spray the front end here um, with some gloss black and then just go over with an Alclad or um, MRP's white aluminium. I'm not, not sure which one I'll pick yet. And um, then that's the front part done, and then I can mask that off to then paint the rear. I'm thinking of doing that because um, I prefer not to mask the silver. So what I might actually do is even start spraying the um, German grey colour now, because we're at the we're at the main point. This this does come together. I mean, what what I've got here, I've got all the parts off the sprue now, and we're basically looking at undercarriage. We've got the um, the rudder there which is just going to be sprayed white, so that's done, as far as this is concerned. You've got the two wheels, and um, that's it. So, I might go down the route of now spraying on the grey colour and then masking that, so I don't have to worry about masking the um, bare metal pieces. And then, um, the reason I'm leaving the wings off is simply because uh, the wings go across the aluminium part, so I want to spray them separately to save some um, annoying masking. And then you're just going to have to, you just glue them on like that and you're just going to have to set the aircraft up for a little while until the cement dries. So that should be no problem. Um, so next steps, I think I'm going to put the undercarriage together. So I've got um, the three parts separate here. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is um, assemble these off the aircraft using the, uh, the the airframe as a guide to make sure everything's set right. Um, as well as the other parts as well, we've got the tail wheel, the skid at the back there, um, goes on. We've also got the part for the rigging here at the front as well. All of that, as well as the steps here that I've left on the sprue, are going to be um, pretty much like an interior green, like a glossy wood green colour. So I'm going to spray all of them off again, off the aircraft, and then bring it together at the end once the wings are on. So um, that's how everything's looking at the minute. I have uh, had a go at the propeller trying to do the wood, um, trying to do a sort of wood effect there with the main beam running down and I've uh, done a few dabs of a slightly off, um, a slightly different wood colour as well and now I'm going to gloss this, put a uh, orange filter across to give it a kind of glossed wood effect and then paint the uh, middle part there with aluminium and then that's uh, going to, I'm going to call a propeller done then. So we are pushing on with the aircraft so uh, hopefully in the next step we've got the front part of the engine cowling and all the aluminium done um, as well as the main colour start getting the wings on think about the undercarriage and then we can put a gloss coat on and ready for decals so just to show you how sometimes <coughs> you've got to adjust things from your plans um, everything's gone uh, fine here but I have noticed a few little um, things that sort of just were troubling me so I've, I've decided to go ahead and fix them just to couple tiny little, um, it's quite strange actually, it wasn't really sink marks, it was just small holes appeared, there was three holes there and one there, so I've just dropped a bit of um, Mr Surfacer in, so I'll just sand that back loosely so I don't disturb, um, well, I'm going to disturb the paint, but I mean I, I, I'll blend it so that I only have to then go back over with the paint colour and it won't be an obvious step, so there's that bit, um, and uh, stupidly here when I was gluing the wings on, I had a piece of, I had a bit of a drop of the glue on my finger, so as I was touching that, it's obviously uh, melted the bit of the plastic in the paint there. So I've just smoothed that back down again, so I can cover that with the base coat, um, the the paint colour, sorry. And um, I've just got to add one little piece here that I've broken off. It's just a small little, um, I don't know what it is really. Uh, it's not used for anything. Uh, like it's not part of the undercarriage or anything, but it's a little. Um, uh, there's a little bit sticking out of the fuselage there, so I just need to make another little bit here by st stretch sprue, and that'll be simple enough. 
So I'm about to do that now and then that will um, complete the airframe. And um, I'm very happy with how it's come out paint wise and uh, the metal colour as well around the front and um, it meets up with the inside of the fuselage and it just looks really quite good so I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's coming together at the minute. Um, and uh, next I've, I've painted in some of the leather that you might see there as well so the next step is once everything's sorted and I've um, fixed these small little bits I've shown you um, we'll be ready for deckling then so I'll put a gloss coat on it and I've also deviated from the instructions a little bit <coughs> and constructed the undercarriage separately uh, just by it was simple enough just glued the parts together and then just kind of set it on the fuselage so that I knew that it was in the right uh, spacing and there's a little bit of play in it because it's soft plastic so that's fine so I'm going to spray this with uh, Tamiya's um, cockpit green because that's as close to the colour as I could really get and I've got the three parts here and the brace on the top as well for the rigging and the two footsteps um, so I'm going to spray all of that and then that will be done that just needs to be attached to the vehicle that just needs to be attached to the aircraft and then I've got the pilot and the um, rudder here, which uh, I'm going to spray both of them white to give the rudder, that gives it its actual colour. And then the uh, pilot has got a nice base coat then for white for further painting. Um, I've added just a hollowed out barrel, barrel to the front of the machine gun. I mean, you can barely see it, we're talking tiny things here, but I just thought I'd do it anyway. And um, we've got the two wheels here as well, so they've now been sprayed up with the the base colour and um, I'll just paint in the rubber as well which is going to be like a grey colour and that will complete those and like I said before we got the propeller to do just going to give that a gloss coat with the rest of it when the deckling comes on and then just give that an orange filter so everything's coming together quite nicely so hopefully in the next step that you see shortly uh, we're on to deckling
decaling is now finished uh, on this one and I've started doing a little bit of the rigging so just get this out of the way so um, the rigging thread that I'm using is uh, by um, Ushi uh, I think it's Van der Rosen or um, something similar and it's uh, Rig that thing, and this is the super fine size, which um, I find is the best for one seventy second. Um, but uh, do be warned that it is quite fine if you're going to use that stuff. I tend to need like a white backing for it. I mean, here it is. You probably won't even see it on camera if I can get some out. I mean, that's what we're dealing with. I'm not sure what you can see of this. Generally, I put it on like a piece of white paper. I've struggled a little bit on this cutting mat even. But anyway, it's very um, stretchy stuff and it uh, reacts with the super glue, much like easy EZ line does, but it's um, a lot thinner. Maybe you can see that there, I don't know. Um, so I haven't actually rigged the main parts of the plane, I've just started rigging the areas so I can get um, all the components together and then I want to gloss, uh, put a gloss coat over um, the decals now and then start on the weathering so I want to get the undercarriage and everything on apart from the propeller basically um, so I've glued the rudder on and there are a couple of small parts of um, rigging that I've done here which you probably again won't be able to see but there are two um, control lines here I believe for the rudder I, th I think they just pull the rudder there's two there below and two above so I've put them on then I've glued the rudder on and then we've got um, the part of the undercarriage here which has got the crossover so again I'm not sure whether you can see this so hopefully that shows up there you can see the crossover on the rigging um, so it's very fine stuff but I mean that's a lot easier to do at this stage because you just you just um, connect it to the two top points there of the of the rear legs and um, then wrap it around you can do it in one piece there's only two glue points um, so that's now done and um, that is just about the next stage is going to be fixing this on so um, I measured this up like I mentioned earlier uh, when I glued it separately to make sure it would um, fit so it's just a little bit of adjustment there's a bit of play in it and that's going to sit on there nicely like that um, I've got to do a tiny bit of painting here there's just um, on the on the rear I don't know what you'd call it the sort of um, it would be the tail wheel but I suppose the tail slide or, or something like that um, this horizontal piece that's a piece of wood into which is actually the wooden colour so I, th I believe they probably would have slide in replacements into there so I'm just going to pick that out as the wooden colour and then leave the framework in the green um, and then I've got to affix the two foot pedals here uh, sorry um, footholds to get into the aircraft and where I've sprayed them when they're on the aircraft I'm then going to just touch in that bit of paint there which is obviously I'd have pressed into the blue tack as I'm spraying it and then just paint the um, the rubber wheels the rubber tyres on the wheels here as well and then we're pretty much all together and right into decaling uh, right into then we'll be right into weathering uh, the decals have gone on very nice uh, no problem here that I've found um, it's uh, it's very nice decals that you get with this kit and um, you get everything you really want um, even the brass um, or sort of copper uh, covers for the fuel cap and the two caps here on the um, engine you get a nice little um, sort of uh, engine makers mark there as well and then a few stencils for the rear of the fuselage so uh, it makes for a no very nice aircraft and the um, the pattern along the fuselage is very nice that sky blue breaks up the monotone color um, and we don't seem to have the same problems as I had in the original release um, where these parts on the fuselage weren't measured correctly and they didn't really fit well whereas on here uh, as you can see they've lined up very nicely with no problem and across the bottom there so um, everything's gone on very well here so hopefully <coughs> so in the next step we'll um, do a bit of weathering and then it'll be on to rigging and try and bring this one to an end. So after all that I haven't actually um, added a gloss coat here, I decided to just 
get straight on with the oils and um, it's going quite well. Uh, I'm not sure how far I'm going to go with this. Um, I have decided I'm not going to do like a panel line wash as such. I'm not going to like hit it with a big wash of like the Flory models wash or anything like that like I usually do. Um, I've just gone over it basically here with um, raw umber at the minute. And that's just to kind of tone down the white and blend everything in. So I suppose if it's like a filter, if anything. So I'm going on neat and then um, uh, just kind of streaking it neat with like a cotton bud and then um, with straight thinners, just blending it. Um, I haven't done the uh, undercarriage or the wheels or anything here, but I've done um, uh, the, across the wings and onto the fuselage. And I think it's had an effect of just toning it down slightly. Um, there's still quite a bit there showing on the rudder so I need to blend that in there obviously it shows up you know the strong colours on white show up quite quite a lot so unless you want it to look di dirty um, you know you need to blend a little bit there so I've still got a bit of blending to do um, so I think the next case uh, the next step will, will be just I think I might do a black wash in around here um, with some black oils and then I might use a few other sort of toning colours just to try and um, blend everything together a little bit and uh, hopefully that will get us somewhere where we want to be and then we can start thinking about um, dull coating it down, finishing off the propeller, getting the um, pilot painted and adding the rigging. So here we are prior to the final um, varnish coat and um, it's all but finished, I've fully rigged it. I did try and film some of that but that just ended up in um, quite a lot of uh, frustration, maybe a small amount of swearing so it um, wasn't something I could do on camera too well. Um, I have used the uh, Ushi Superfine rigging thread that I mentioned earlier. Um, basically it's one of those things uh, I find that um, more often than not it works and if everything's going with you uh, it's very good the super glue works as soon as you touch the stuff the thread to it it holds and then you put it under tension and it holds and that's fine but um, sometimes it does uh, you do get problems where it doesn't hold and then it starts to be tacky and it sort of pulls and then it's it's quite frustrating so um, you just got to take your time with that and I'm by no means an expert so it's, it's not for me to um, advise on that I don't think. Um, you'll see the rigging, it's hard to see at the moment once I do the uh, pictures and we'll have a sort of um, final rundown on it as well. I've got one or two small bits I just want to touch in. Um, I mainly just used three colours of oils and um, just did a bit of streaking with raw umber. Um, I did use a green to highlight the uh, undercarriage the, and the stuff um, and everything that's painted this kind of interior green colour. Um, I did change the foot holds here. I just used a bit of stretch br sprue there because the ones that we have in the kit they are extremely over scale I would say but I was going to use them but I kept knocking them off and I thought well if I just make this it was at the end of the build. Um, so it was quite easy just a bit of stretch sprue it's just two pieces straight down in the locating holes and then another piece across the 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 bottom of it and it's actually quite strong because I've used Tamiya Extra Thin it's been okay. Um, we've got the propeller here which I've done um, the general sort of wood effects on with um, painting it a wood colour that I showed earlier and then putting um, some clear orange and burnt <laughs> sienna washes over it. I'm going to keep it as that is, that gives it a nice, nice sort of natural sheen so I'm not going to um, attach this to the model until the end and I'm not going to varnish this, I'm going to leave it as it is. So that's uh, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and everything's gone together very well, there's been no issues. Um, 
I think it's a nice looking kit. I might do a bit of uh, pigment stains once I've put the matte coat on, just from the wheels kicking up a bit of uh, mud on the underside and apart from that I think we're um, somewhere near it. So uh, we'll head on into the final reveal pictures.